Hi guys. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also. I am Brooke Hulkren. We talked over email, but I haven't met in person yet. Um, I, I don't know how much you want for an introduction, but okay. um, I figured you guys probably want to get into the community choice mm -hmm. aggregation discussion right away. So yep. um, you can get into that if you guys Great. would like. Yes. Yeah, that would be terrific. Okay. Um, are there any questions to begin with? Anything that I can not got right off the bat? No, do you want to go over minutes for well you weren't here? Of course not. So, so. <laughs> um, you guys are welcome to Yeah, no, I don't have a copy of the minutes from last time. Okay. So um, I know there were quite a few pending things that we were to go over, but I guess we can do this first and okay. then do that afterwards. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't realize the minutes hadn't been approved. Oh, that's okay. Okay. That's okay. It was a bit of a change because we had one energy manager who left and then we had another one. Yes. Then. So we've had a few transitions. Okay. So in the, in the midst, things were a little. Okay. Yeah. All right. So no worries at all. So okay. Let's just pick up wherever you'd like to pick up. Yeah. Um, so this community choice slash aggregation program. Yes. Um, did, it, did you guys receive these um, notices that mm -hmm. went out, both this yes. one and yes. this notice? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, so as you know, it is the new rate is 17.86 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and that's starting this month at the meter read, correct? That is correct. Okay. So that'll be on the next upcoming bill that you have, um, if you are still opted in. Mm -hmm. I hope so. <laughs> and I, I guess I'm sure there's just concern about how much the price has jumped. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to defer to a few people from Colonial Power Group mm -hmm. over here. Um, okay. They have much better technical explanations for why it's so good. My name is Mark Capitona from Colonial Power, 5 Mount Royal Ave, Marlboro, Mass. Uh, we, we have a consultant that helps the town um, come up with the aggregation. So I just want to give you a little background. We've been doing this probably for every bit of five or seven years or so. Normally rates have been just fine. We go out to bid this time and it happens to be the day after Mr. Putin decided to invade Ukraine. So the electricity market jumps up tremendously. He said, oh, let's see if this is just a blip. Hopefully that's all it is. And we'll, you know, we'll get right, things right back to normal. It wasn't a blip. The market has continued to literally sprint upward since then. So I think our first round we were at 12 something. And by the time we said, okay, enough is enough, it was 17 8. We just don't see it coming down. And the reason we said enough is enough, the contract was ending. If we don't do something, everyone had to go back to basic service mm -hmm. and um, be exposed to the market this coming winter. They make, if you go back to basic service, then you need to go all the way back through the, the, the whole process. You have to vote on the plan, and it's about a three-year process. So the manager thought, well, let's at least do something short-term to get us through. So right now, our current projections, uh, uh, National Grid will probably be somewhere in the 20s, maybe 23 to 25 this coming winter. Um, so the pain that's coming is just tremendous. And what we're trying to do is see if this market, let's just say we, we fill it with some, some, some gas, it's not as hot as they predict. Maybe we're gonna see some uh, um, alleviation on price mm -hmm. later on this, this summer and uh, into the fall. That's why we only did a short term contract. All we're trying to do is bridge the gap between now and then hoping that the market will come down. If not, we'll certainly be able to deliver some savings vis-a-vis -vis basic service this coming winter. We'll, be, we'll have a little longer of a contract. <laughs> the, the market was so bad for the first time, National Grid was unable to procure pricing in March for the 50% that they require. So they buy two blocks, or I'll, I'll say two strips, of 50% of our needs. We're all residential customers. They buy 50% of our needs, so they, in, in March, they buy a strip from April, right, excuse me, from May 1st right through April 30th, 2022 to 2023. The pricing was so bad, they only bought 25%. Just on June 6th, they went back out and they bought the other 25%. At like 20% higher than 
they did. So <laughs> this coming winter is even worse than we thought. And again, I think they were hoping that the market was going to come down, and it just never came back down. When does the 17.8 expire? November. The November reads. It'll go up until the November reads, and then we'll have to secure something for starting with your November reads, which lines up with National Grid's winter. Right? Exactly. So, us, we're going to be literally, we already have the NRFP on the street so that everyone can be pricing it. So, we're watching the market. Well, is this, this is going to sound crazy, but the market's higher than this right now. About 19.6, somewhere in that range. So, um, it, I, no solace, right? 17's a just, just horrific, but it's a, a way to keep everything in line so we can we can get back to normal. I hope this this coming fall, if not, it gets us a bridge to get something back to normalcy next next year. Next year in March, the the futures curve is, is much better than it is currently. Probably three cents lower than it is right now. Three cents. So we have this huge run up in the winter time. We have a natural gas capacity issue. That's where all the price shows up, literally, uh, DC and Feb. Those are the months that really drive our pricing. So in, I think it's really April, things start to, so natural gas is around $9. It's around 5 in March. And normally you're only, you know, you're within a dollar or something. So I expect to see some better pricing. I'm just hopeful that um, these kind of prices at the pump and everywhere else create some demand destruction that, actually starts to, um, people are using less electricity, driving down price, ha helping us all out down the road. At, at, right now, the biggest driver, unfortunately for us, is the war. It uh, has all energy prices, gas, it, it, you know, uh, uh, heating fuel, all of it is just sky high. You see it all. Mm -hmm. Any specific questions about the ag or the pricing or what's going to happen moving forward, what customers need to do? I mean, obviously, what would you suggest the townspeople do? So in this scenario, if somebody has a situation where they're on fixed income and pricing mm -hmm. is tight, national grid's rate is there. That's 11.4, okay. you know, a full six cents less a kilowatt hour. What are we, on an average customer, what are we talking about It was six cents? About $30 a month, $35 a month. That's not chump change when you're paying $5 right. a gallon. So, you know, at, at the pump. So you could do that. The only thing I would caution is this winter, I know it's going to be horrific. The highest price in the past is around 16 cents. I expect it to be a full 10 cents higher than that right. this coming winter. So if you do decide to opt out, which is perfectly fine, everyone has the right to, you can get out, you can opt back in, come your November meter read. Just keep something on your calendar. Yeah, That's and we'll all. look to do another postcard. Oh, we'll coordinate absolutely. with yeah. Brooke and the town yeah. and get another postcard out so folks know what the, mm -hmm. what the national grid rate is. In the middle of October, just to remind people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Great. So you guys mail the postcard? Yes. Not the town. Right. Correct. Well, we do it on behalf of the town. Right. right. They we verified. drafted, we got language approved. Yeah, correct. Okay. The town decides all of it. We, we help yeah. say, oh, try this language. They, they may change it back and forth. We, oh, this looks great. And then we just mail off. Mm -hmm. right. So everybody could opt out and the program would still stay in place. That's yeah. exactly correct. As long as you have a rate, you're fined by the state. If you said, I'm going to shut down the program, now you start a process that's, you know, right. two years long, right. two years plus long. Mm -hmm. But the town doesn't have the option to take everybody off and then put everybody back on. That'll, that'll pull the rug out right. from under you. Yeah. Well, not, not so much us as the supplier. So the winning supplier was Dynagy. Mm -hmm. So they would have bought all of this power. Mm -hmm. And then everyone would have left and they'd be stuck with this power in this, in this well, actually it would have been a winner this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. force the town some more. Actually, right? yeah, <laughs> they yeah, might not have been so bad. <laughs> it would not have been bad for them. But you know, just give where pricing is today. Right. Right. But, but again, not something they allow. Right. right, of course. How many players are there that are supplying energy? Lots of suppliers, not so. Most of people that are reselling it. Yeah, so no, not very many that are that are willing to supply municipal aggregation. Tremendously um, competitive. Uh, so the big players right now in Massachusetts, a company called Dynagy, owned by Vistra, Constellation. Uh, those are the real. Those are the big ones. And then there's also a company called First Point, small out of Rhode Island. 
they, they do a decent amount of business. Um, it used to be Direct Energy, they're now NRG. Those are kind of the four big players that bid on all our. Um, Next era. Oh, my apologies, I'm missing the, the 800 pound ground. <laughs> Next era, but they don't win a lot of our ags. They have won some, but but I would say they probably probably have 15 aggregations out of 150 or so in and Massachusetts. None of those are actual creators of energy. Right. They're all just resellers. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how so how long the cascade is, is. So, so between the guy who's got the dam and the <laughs> and the guy who's you know turning on his light bulb. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dynergy does own generation. They, they do. They own some small generation out here at WCMA. Uh, First Point does not. Constellation does through their parent company, um, um, Exelon. That's the you know across the country they own a lot of generation. I know I know Constellation. I own like Nistic and some other dog um, generation plants that we're all uh, kind of. I'm trying to think. Uh, Next Era does own. They own Seabrook Next Era, but someone like First Point wouldn't have any generation. And who's the other supplier I'm missing here? Right. Direct Energy does not have any generation. They do not own generation in Massachusetts. NRG owns uh, solar and wind assets in, in ISO New England, but no direct uh, generation here. Figure pick your brand, because. Oh, feel free. Anyway. It's just that, you know, because the market is totally separate from the numbers. Completely. You know what I mean? It's just, can somebody. You know, I mean, the, the, the easiest way to save, obviously, is to cut out the middlemen, because you've got two or three mock-ups. If you can get back to whoever the generator is, if you could buy direct from the generator, then, you know, your price would be much better than buying from the guy who bought from the guy who bought from the guy. Exactly. That's all I'm trying to, I'm trying to, that's oh, no. all I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, is, just, just reduce to the, the, the few middlemen as possible. You know? Uh, no, no, it, yeah. it makes perfect sense. And yeah. some of them have that, others do, do not. Right. That's why Dynergy is a little bit more competitive than other suppliers. Because they have their own source. That's correct. Yeah. When they need to. Okay. I think that answers all of my questions. Okay. Anything further? No. I don't think so. Unless you want us to stay, we just wanted to make sure that no, we're no, interested. No, no, that's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you for your time, Jill. Yeah, you I appreciate the backup. <laughs> <laughs> Not anytime. If you have any news back, just, just say something to Brooke. We'll be happy to come out anytime. Sounds great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. So thank you. you guys are out of Marlboro, right, Seth? Yes. That's correct, Marlboro Mass. Okay. The best you can stay cool here today. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Have a good Thank day. you again. Right, Thank you. Up. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Um, yes. I yes. agree. Um, <laughs> so, just a couple of other things that yeah. have been in the works. Um, the fleet, national grid fleet assessment, and the electric vehicles. Um, we did receive twenty-five thousand dollars to purchase. It was supposed to be two electric vehicles for the town. There was a miscommunication, I guess, with the town and the state. So they, we were supposed to get 25,000 for each of the two vehicles. We only got 25,000 for two vehicles. As I'm sure you can guess, electric vehicles do not, not cost $25,000 right now. Um, no. So I, I've been speaking with Julie, and um, Caleb Moody was working on it prior to me starting. He mm -hmm. was looking into actually purchasing, you know, getting quotes on these vehicles. Um, I don't know if we're going to purchase one or two just yet, and there are supply chain issues. So with... you would supplement it with, with town funds for twenty-five thousand. Sorry. You would supplement the twenty-five thousand with town funds to do this then. Um, I'm not. I don't know exactly. I apologize. Um, I, I think some of it, yes, would have to be paid for with town funds. Um, it, if it was only one vehicle purchased, that's less than needs to be supplemented. Um, I don't know. They're going for around like 30000 to 35000 right now. So, But the purchase of two of them would obviously be double that. So I think we're looking at one right now. Um, the what about the charging stations? Yes. If there were charging stations that were going to go in 
10 town lots. Yeah, what's the status of those? So we were waiting on DEP approval. They had a long list. They had to close the program for a short while um, to catch up with the number of applications that they were getting. I just received word on Friday that they reopened that list and reopened the program. So we are next on the list, which is perfect because I, we had a vendor previously that was going to install them, but again, he kept, um, he, the company, the vendor, they kept increasing their prices and changing the quote as we were going along. So um, after talking with Julie, Darlene, we decided to go back out to bid. So that just closed. I received all the bids on Friday. So now it's just a process of going through them, deciding which one's the most advantageous. And then I will send that to DEP and they will approve, hopefully, our application. And we'll receive the money. We can uh, finalize the contract with the vendor to install those. And once the contract is finalized, um, they have six months to complete the work for the electric charging stations. Which yeah, where are they going? Right out here, um, the back section of the parking lot, mm -hmm. over next to the town manager's spot, and also those two handicap spots that are over there. Um, Is that for the town vehicles only? No, it's public access charging. So it is open to the public. Um, town vehicles, it has to be open to the public um, right. for at least 12 hours a day. Town right. vehicles will charge at night when we do get a town vehicle, but. Mm -hmm. Yes, it'll be open to the public. Would there be a fee for use of those? Yes, I don't know what the fee is just yet. Um, I think it depends on market. Yeah, and we have to wait to get it installed first. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Great. It's so, and that's the only one. Those are the only ones we have currently pending are the ones here at Town Hall. Yes. I know there was talk about putting them elsewhere. So right now we're just concentrating on here. Right now it's just town hall, yes. Okay. All right. Um, oh, I guess the one last thing was... Green Community Grant? Green Communities Grant. Um, the Spring Block Grant was completed in April, and that was submitted. Um, we have not heard back on whether it was approved or not, but that was for the Merriam building, mm -hmm. weatherization and heat mm -hmm. pump optimization projects in that building. And yes, that was submitted. Um, okay. Still waiting to hear. We don't have available on that yet. No. What are the other um, upgrades that we're looking to do? Is that the primary goal? Do we have others for the, for the spring? There were no others for the spring. Um, there's another block. There's a spring and a fall block right. round of applications. Um, so I have been looking into what to do for the fall. Mm -hmm. I apologize. You know, they were submitting that right as I started the yep. spring spring block grant. So you know, that was decided prior to right. me. But um, I was speaking to Nick Schwartz at the sewer department about potentially doing the pumping stations mm -hmm. as a potential fall block application um, just because there's a lot of those and they use a lot of uh, energy electricity so okay and then that would be a project between us and the sewer department not just focusing on town hall I felt it was best to spread the wealth <laughs> okay all right great I don't think there was another one that we were thinking about that's Marion building mm-hmm Okay. Yes, and if you guys have suggestions on what you think, you know, I can absolutely look into that, pass that along, whatever okay. you like. All right. Great. And who are the biggest users of electricity? I don't know. Um, the high school and yeah. the police station. And all the police station? Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Just because um, it's lights are on twenty four seven. It's yeah. always staffed. Things like that. So. Those are the two biggest ones. Well, that would be what? Yes, I think the middle school, um, the highway department is a fair amount, but I have to double check to see if that's mainly because of vehicle usage with the highway department. Um, 
I'm, I haven't looked at the numbers in a week or two, so I'd have to look at them again, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I think that's all that we had. Um, we don't really have minutes for review from last time. It was... Well, you run a quick meeting. <laughs> I mean, I guess the big question is what's going to happen with the heating budget this year, because right now sure all those budgets must be totally shot. Everything um, will have to. I would suggest you can get sweaters and long, mm -hmm. long johns right now. <laughs> Everyone will have to readjust their budgets for sure, including the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think it's going to change between now and the end of the winter. No. No, most likely not. Uh -huh. No. No, I think um, everything will go up in, in return since uh, fuel costs will go up, the secondary fuel costs will go up, pellets and everything, because the demand for those will go high. So oh, and then those you know, everything's shipped by either everything rail is relative or to truck each other. And the diesel is even worse. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Supply yeah. chain. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. Um, what do you propose for the next meeting date? Do you have a date that you'll have answers for those pending questions? Um, so we can schedule a next meeting date around those? The I would say, um, sorry, I'm blanking. No, it's OK. Did, did you want to do one potentially in the fall? Or did you want to do one any earlier than that? Because then we'll have, I'll have started working on the fall green community. Right. But of course, we'll have already had an answer about the spring block. Right. So. Yeah, I think in between would be good. OK. Yeah. Between. Um, Typically, we do them every few months. But I think in this okay. case, where you know, we're still waiting on answers from mm -hmm. you know, the spring block and things like that, maybe something a little bit sooner would be best. OK. Um, how does? So maybe in it's August. Up to you guys, August, yeah. Okay. So we'll try to plan for maybe middle of August. Yes. That'll give us two months to review energy costs and try and figure out a plan for the fall. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Going back to our original thing about the uh, the aggregate pricing, is the is the aggregate contract with Constellation exclusively? No, it's with Dynagy. It's with Dynagy. Dynagy exclusively. Yes. Um, for right now, it is because you know we entered into the contract with them as our supplier. We did ask Colonial. So previously, it was just exclusively we were getting pricing from Dynagy. We asked them to open it up to solicit pricing from multiple others as well. So. That's something that they need to get in touch with National Grid on behalf of the town for. But hopefully, you know, with more pricing, there's more option to mm -hmm. select a lower price. Right. I'm just wondering, you know, because I'm trying to remember back to Matt's was here. Mm -hmm. And he did the, I got the feeling that, I got the feeling he was more involved in the purchasing as opposed to getting it from a vendor. Does that make sense? Matthew. Was, yeah. Matthew was assisting like was, in a, arranging with Colonial. So Colonial has been our um, has been our advisor. Yep, our right. advisor for right. for quite a while. So right. Matthew is working with Colonial. I know he still has a contact there. With mm -hmm. He's probably one of the people that's out with us just now. Um, but I know that that was something he was doing, but not necessarily working. Colonial is the one that finds us the best rate. They're the advisor that goes, puts it out to bid, yes, so to yeah. speak. Like they said, mm -hmm. they put out mm -hmm. requests for quotes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. And then they find what what the best rate would be for the town, and that's right. what they lock in with the best right. terms. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I guess I was just wondering why we're not just putting it out to bid ourselves. Well, that, <laughs> because Colonial is the one that's you know in touch with everyone. It's kind of mm -hmm. like having an agent that right. goes out gets the best price, yeah. Yeah, best representation. Yeah. As to but if you have five people reselling, then right. you're not necessarily getting, you're getting the best price of the fifth tier. Right. 
but you can probably talk to the fourth tier directly. I see what you're saying, you know because what I'm saying? the consultant takes a Not that I'm saying, so I'm, that... I'm, trying, I'm not trying to mm -hmm. steal the guy's lunch. No, I but don't just, that. you know, it's like if... Uh, yeah. After all the fees come out. I'm reading a book about insurance right now, and it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. there is no, nobody's taking any risk, because everything is underwritten by everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if something actually happens, somebody kicks in a nickel, and the guy gets his buck. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you've got 12 You've got, you're paying 12 people every time you pay somebody. Right. You're not paying one person. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm just thinking of that structure in terms of, because the energy market seems to work the same way. I mean, that's yes. basically what anyone went to jail for, right? Is that they created their monopoly and, you know, yes. made everybody pump the prices up. Right. And then, then, oh, it's not real. <laughs> it was a bit, bit different you know, from that. The no, I mean, version, you know, the micro is the macro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you, it's just a question of how you analyze how people get caught in things, mm -hmm. right? Right, right, right. You know. Yeah. So. I will say they are great at helping and answering right. questions. Um, when we were going through the process of getting pricing, it was like every day. So I think just the manpower. Mm -hmm. If I had to spend every day going out and getting pricing from multiple sources, you know, that it's just, there's not the time of the day for right. that. That's why they're the advisors. Right. And I understand that. somebody yeah. has to be the point person. Yeah. So at right. some point, there is a point person. Yeah. Like, you can't avoid it. I'm right. Like, and I do believe they have our best interests in yeah. mind yeah. when they, they put yeah. us out to for a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So, okay. Awesome. Good? Yeah. Good. It's All nice right. to meet you guys. Nice to meet you <laughs> too. So I guess I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second, second. Oh, second by Steve. Second by Steve. Okay. So I guess we are adjourned for today.